So today, we are simplifying square roots. So when you have a square root, for example, the square root of 600, and you want to simplify it, what you want to do is try to take as much of the number underneath the radical symbol, the square root symbol, as you can, take as much of it outside of the radical, okay? And the way we do that is, for square roots, we're trying to find the biggest perfect square that divides into 600 and break that 600 up, all right? And for this, it's helpful to know your perfect squares. So what I have over here is a list of my perfect squares, all right? And for 600, I can easily tell that 100 is the biggest perfect square that divides into 600, all right? So I can think of the square root of 600 as the square root of 100, which is my perfect square, times 6, because 6 times 100 is 600, all right? Now, the reason why this is helpful is, now that I've broken up this square root, I can think of it as the square root of 100 times the square root of 6. And what is the square root of 100? It's just 10 times the square root of 6. The square root of 6 is irrational, so I leave it as times the square root of 6, or the way we usually write it as, instead of 10 times the square root of 6, we just write it as 10 root 6. And that is the simplified form of the square root of, us, of 600. So see, what we're doing is we're trying to find the biggest perfect square that goes into 600 and then take the square root of it and pull it out from underneath the radical. Okay? So that's all fine when you have an easy number like 600 and you can easily find the biggest perfect square. But what if you have a number where you don't know what the biggest perfect square is? Okay? So 88, I could kind of figure it out if I needed to, but let's pretend like I have no idea what the biggest perfect square that goes into 88 is. So in order to find that biggest perfect square, what we could do is break 88 down into prime factors by making a factor tree. And if you don't remember factor trees, you probably did this in elementary school. You think what times what equals 88? And for me, I know 8 times 11 gets me 88. And 11 is prime, but 8 isn't. So now we got to break 8 down. And we keep going till all we have left are prime numbers. 8 is 4 times 2. And I'll drop down that 11 so that way everything stays in line. And we're almost there, but 4 can be broken down into 2 times 2. And then I'll drop down my other numbers. And you'll notice now I've just broken 88 down into just prime numbers. 2 times 2 times 2 times 11 would give me 88. Now, why is this helpful? Because if I'm looking for the biggest perfect square that goes into 88, what I do is I look at my prime factors and I find the pairs. All right. So if you notice, there's a pair of twos right here and here. So what I can do is I can break 88 down into two numbers multiplied together, where if I multiply the pairs together, 2 times 2 in this case is 4, that's the biggest perfect square that goes into 88. And if I multiply the leftovers, 2 times 11, 22, I get the rest of the number that multiplies to get 88. Okay? So in other words, we break it down to prime factors, find the pairs of prime factors, in this case, 2 and 2. And notice there is a third one, but we don't want a trio. We want a pair. So we just take the two of them, multiply them together. That's the biggest perfect square that goes into 88. Multiply the leftovers together. That's the other number. And now we can break down this square root. It's the square root of 4 times the square root of 22. And what is the square root of 4? In this case, the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 22 stays on the end. And that is our simplified square root. And it will always be the case that if you multiply the pairs, you will always get a square root that comes out as a whole number. Always. All right. And notice in this case, there was only one pair. It's possible for there, be, for there to be multiple pairs. In that case, you multiply all the pairs together and get that first number. Multiply all the leftovers together and get the last number. Okay. So let's do one more. And this will be the hardest one of the three the square root of 504. So notice, 
there is no way that I know the biggest perfect square that goes in 504. Even if I look on my perfect squares list, I mean, I guess I could guess and check with a calculator until I found it, but let's just make factor tree for 504, shall we? All right, so 504. Uh, what goes into 504? Well, it's pretty even. I think four goes into it. Four goes into it 126 times. All right, now, if you didn't know that, I know it's even, so you could have done two, but I can kind of tell it goes into four, goes into it. I could break four down as two times two. I can break 126 down as, I know six goes into that. Six times two is 12, six times one is six. So six times 21, we're getting there. The twos are all prime. Six is not prime though, that's three times two. And 21's not prime, that's seven times three. All right, and then I'll drop my other numbers down. And notice, now I have all prime numbers. And that's exactly what I want. Because now, I can find the biggest perfect square that goes into 504 by multiplying my pairs. And notice, here's a pair, a pair of twos, and there's also one more pair, a pair of threes. All right, and notice, there's no other pairs after that. I mean, there's another two, but again, no trios. For square roots, we just want pairs. All right, so let's do this now. The biggest perfect square that goes into 504 would be all the pairs multiplied together. Two times two times three times three. That's 36 times. Now all the leftovers multiply over here. Two times seven, 14. All right, so I've just broken 504 down to 36 times 14. And if you're not sure, let's say you're like, I don't know, does that actually equal 504? You can always double check it. 36 times 14, it should be 504. There it is. All right, so we've broken down 504 and 36 is the biggest perfect square, which means I can rewrite this as the square root of 36 times the square root of 14. And the square root of 36 is a whole number, six. And then the square root of 14 just tacks on at the end. Six times the square root of 14 is the simplified version of the square root of four, 504. All right, so that little trick will always work. All right, sometimes if you're lucky, you'll get a number where you just know the biggest perfect square. In that case, you could just jump straight to here. All right, but other times it takes some work to figure out what the biggest perfect square that goes into it is. So if you're not sure or you have no idea, Make a factor tree, break it down into prime factors, and then multiply the pairs to get the biggest perfect square that goes into your number. All right, so hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.